Hello, class of 2021. Welcome to your virtual senior night. My name is Mrs. Bierk, and I have the students A through CO and the Mayos Academy. Hi, my name is Mrs. Dizon, and I have students whose last names begin with CP through MC and the Spark Academy. Hi, my name is Mrs. Stubblefield. I have MD through Z and the AMP Academy. Hi, this is Mrs. Stubblefield. So I'm going to go over what we will cover. We'll cover the graduation requirements and senior audits, the general college information, MPC, UCCSU dates and deadlines, common application, and financial aid, and career readiness. So the question is, are you on track to graduate? And here are the things to look for. This is our high school graduation requirements. Four years of English, three years of social science, three years of math, two years of science, one life, one physical. An example of that is biology, which most of the freshmen take, or chemistry or physics as a physical science. One year of word language, Spanish, Japanese, or French. One year of fine arts or a CTE. A CTE course is like a media course, a fine arts class can be drawing and painting. Two years of PE, one semester of world geography, one semester of health, and a total of 230 credits with a minimum GPA of a 2.0. What does a senior audit look like? So every year we as counselors do a senior audit for every senior and that identifies what classes they need to complete their senior year to graduate. So are they on track? Are they not on track? What the GPA is and also are they A through G for your college eligible? So this is what it looks like as a blank slate. We put the student name, uh, graduation year, which is gonna be 2021. And then any, if you look at this right here, the little darker areas, those are the graduation requirements. This is a sample of a completed senior audit. And we're gonna be sending out our calendars. Each of us as counselors are gonna send out our calendars so that we'll be individually with the students through Google Meet or Zoom or even a phone conference to go over their course requirements. Hey, it's Mrs. Deason here. Now we're gonna jump into college application information. Here are some tips to remember when filling out your college applications. Use your legal name and personal email address as your school email address will be deactivated as soon as you graduate. Be organized. Keep track of your dates, deadlines, and supplemental requirements. Check your email frequently. Create your school portals after you apply. And always remember to review your application before submission. Here in California, we have the University of California system and the California State University system. On the left, you'll see all of the schools that are within the University of California system. And on the right, you'll see all the schools that are in the California State University system. Here are some important dates to remember for the UC and CSU systems. The UC application opened August 1st. This is for data entry only. So as of August 1st, you could start building information into your application. The UC application filing period, which is the time period where you can actually start submitting your applications, is November 1st with a deadline of November 30th. The website to apply to the University of California schools is admissions.universityofcalifornia.edu. UC application requires students to input demographic information, academic history, SAT or ACT, extracurricular activities, and personal statements. The CSU filing period is October 1st through November 30th. Their website is calstate.edu slash apply. The CSU applications require students to input demographic information and academic history. Remember that December is typically the deadline for taking the SAT and ACT if you choose to take them. However, it's also important to know that some schools require November as their final date. Here's some admissions application requirement info for the CSU, UC, and private and out-of-state schools. 
the California State University schools require a minimum GPA of 2.5 or above. The SAT and ACTs are not required for the CSU system. An essay is also not required. And for financial aid purposes, students will use the FAFSA or DREAM Act. Letters of rec are not required for the CSU. And they do not have early decision or early action options. The University of California system requires students to have a minimum GPA of 3.0 or better. They are currently test optional for the SAT and ACT. An essay is required, and for financial aid students may also use the FAFSA or DREAM Act. Letters of record are also not required for the University of California system, and they do not have early decision or early action. For private and out-of-state schools, their GPA varies, so students should check with the individual schools to determine their minimum required GPAs. The different private schools and out-of-state schools vary as to whether or not they are requiring SAT and ACT right now, so it's also important to check the individual schools to determine their requirements. Essays are required for private schools, and for financial aid purposes, the FAFSA or DREAM Act and the CSS profile may be used. Letters of rec are required for private and out-of-state schools, and some schools may offer early decision and early action, so again, it's also important to verify that with the individual schools that you're interested in applying to. The common application is mostly used for private schools. We encourage you to utilize the Common App when possible. There are over 500 universities that use the Common App. Included within those 500 are Santa Clara University, Stanford University, the University of the Pacific, and the University of Southern California. When utilizing the Common Application, it's one application that's sent to multiple universities. In addition to the Common App essay that's required, each school may also require students to answer supplemental questions. The Common App is made up of the following parts. Standard personal information, like your name and address, future plans and academic interests, demographics and family info, academic history, extracurricular activities, community service, work experience, and essay. To apply, students will utilize the website commonapp.org. Here's some information on the different decision types. Early decision is binding. If you get in, you have to attend. If you're accepted, you must withdraw your other applications from the other universities that you've applied to. Typically, when you apply under early decision, you get your response back prior to getting your financial aid award package. So you won't know what your financial aid is going to look like for that particular school by the time you get in under early decision. So if financial aid is a concern, this may not be the best option for you. Under early decision, students must be very sure they want to attend. Most students do not apply through this option. Early action is non-binding. However, there may be restrictive early action that is offered by some universities. Under early action, students do have until May 1st to decide if they want to attend that university. They just receive their admissions decisions early. It's a good option if you're ready to apply. Regular decision is non-binding. Students may receive rolling admissions decisions, meaning that the universities may let students know of their decisions throughout the year, or some universities send their acceptances all out at one time around March or April. Under regular decisions, students have until May 1st to decide, and this is the decision type that the majority of students will use. Hi everyone, it's Ms. Bierk. We're going to jump right into SAT and ACT information. So unfortunately, due to COVID-19, the SAT will not be offered at Monterey High School this year. For UC admissions, the test is optional, which means that the SAT and ACT is not required, but they will accept your score if you choose to send it. For CSU admissions, they no longer require or accept the SAT or ACT scores. Even if you have taken the exam, they will not accept your scores. For private and out-of-state admissions, most schools are test optional but some may still require your test scores. Research whether your schools will require you to submit your SAT and ACT scores. Community colleges, what options do you have other than a four-year university? 
There's Monterey Peninsula College, or MPC, which is located here in Monterey. Cabrillo College in Santa Cruz. Hartnell College in Salinas. Mission College in Santa Clara. San Jose City College in San Jose. And Santa Barbara City College in Santa Barbara. These are just a few of the options that are local here to Monterey. Um, there are plenty of options throughout the state of California. Uh, you can um, search or talk to your counselor to find some more information. The Monterey Peninsula College Promise. If you are a first time student, which means you have not enrolled in college yet and dual enrollment does not count, the first two years are free. So you need to get complete the FAFSA or the DREAM Act, graduate from Monterey High School, be a first time college student, dual enrollment courses do not count. So that means that if you have taken a dual enrollment course, you are still eligible for this Monterey P Peninsula College Promise. Enroll in at least 12 units or more, which is considered a full-time student, and select an educational goal for a certificate, associate, or a transfer plan to a four-year university. Complete MPC orientation and create an educational plan with the MPC counselor. This is a great opportunity to save a lot of money on your college um, plan, um, and I implore you to find out some more information and apply if, you, if you're planning on going to a uh, community college. What other options are there for financial aid? Most universities will not provide financial aid unless students complete the FAFSA for US citizens or the California Dream Act for undocumented citizens and the CSS profile, which is private schools and you complete that along with uh, the FAFSA or the Dream Act. Applications for FAFSA begin October 1st, 2020, which is less than a month away, and it's open through March 2nd, 2021. Financial aid workshops will be provided in late September, including how-to and other detailed information. Career readiness. Whether you're planning on jumping straight into the job sector or college first, then a career, we're gonna talk about some tips tips and tricks to get you ready. When you're applying to jobs, these are some job sites that you can use, indeed.com, monster.com, or usajobs.gov. You can also go the military route and visit a re military recruiting office. If you are needing help building a resume, I would suggest going to linkedin.com. You can add in all of your job and volunteer and internship experience there, and it can export into a resume. Practice your interviews. Um, use family, friends, um, your counselor to role play and, and be prepared for interviews. Please use a professional email address. Um, try to avoid putting um, acronyms and numbers um, and inappropriate words in an email address. Stick to just your first name and your last name. And then professional attire. Um, don't show up in jeans and a ripped shirt. Um, make sure you're wearing a shirt with sleeves. Um, dress pants are preferred. Um, and maybe a suit jacket. Now we're gonna talk about how to um, schedule an audit review appointment with your counselor. Each counselor, myself, Ms. Dizon, and Ms. Doublefield are going to send an email with appointment times to um, make an appointment with us for an audit review. We are requesting all seniors make this appointment with us to ensure that you are all on track for graduation. Please be on the lookout for this email. Thanks.